As we said, the Air Force was not calling this a sonic boom at first. Instead, they referred to it as a loud boom. Now they are calling it a sonic boom. And judging on the number of calls that came into the Nine on Your Side newsroom, plenty of people were shaken, and you just saw the damage. Nine on Your Side team coverage continues now with the science and makeup of a sonic boom. Craig Smith joins us from the newsroom to explain. Well, Guy, according to an Air Force fact sheet on sonic booms, except for a few measurements taken in a very special test, the maximum pressure measured from a sonic boom was the equivalent of about 21 pounds per square foot. Here's 20 pounds right here. And the Air Force says buildings in good condition, good repair, should be able to handle about 16 pounds without damage. But to avoid damage, civilian planes are not allowed to go supersonic over land, and military planes are usually confined to special areas. This video gives you an idea of the wave of air that piles up when a plane pushes through it. These pictures are at high subsonic just before breaking the sound barrier. NASA used a special type of photography to catch this image of the shock waves a plane creates when it goes supersonic. At slow speeds, a plane easily moves air around it. As it speeds up, air has trouble getting out of the way and piles up. If the plane is able to break through, a cone-shaped shock wave develops and creates a boom. That boom follows the plane as long as it stays supersonic. If a plane's at 30,000 feet, the boom can have a footprint 30 miles wide. F-16s like the Thunderbirds use can go more than twice the speed of sound. Pilots call that Mach 2. After Dr. Peter Rees flight with the Thunderbirds, his pilot for that flight said they went more than nine-tenths the speed of sound. We did a, uh, a mock run where we don't quite go over the speed of sound, but we did 0.97 mock, uh, about 630 miles an hour. We did uh, up to a 9G turn. Now, how's this for some fine graphic work? Now, when the pilot talks about a 9G turn, he's talking about a turn so tight you feel nine times your normal weight. That's important in this sonic boom incident. According to that Air Force fact sheet, sonic shock waves that come from a turn are stronger than waves from level flight and air show performances or air show rehearsals feature a lot of those tight turns. Craig, you've covered a lot of aircraft over the years. How many sonic booms have you heard, and what are the nuances that you can tell us about? Well, I, I heard a, a lot of sonic booms. Normally, a, a civilian wouldn't get a chance to hear a lot of sonic booms because of the tight restrictions on supersonic flight. But covering shuttle flights, I did get to hear a, a lot of sonic booms there. On the west coast of Florida, where we were at the time, you'd hear a very deep sonic boom as it would cross the coast. Then, if you're actually at the landing site, you could see the shuttle well up in the air, but you wouldn't hear a very loud sonic boom at that time. You'd hear two little pops that sounded like someone was firing off a shotgun down the street, for instance, and it's two pops because sonic booms are actually coming off the nose and the tail of any aircraft, but with the shuttle, it's so large, you get that double sonic boom. All right, Craig, very interesting, thank you.